Welcome back everybody. Patrick here, moving on to the next question. We have to determine the limit as x approaches seven over two of the absolute value of two x minus seven times x plus three all over two x minus seven algebraically and we have to show the graph as well. So if you remember, whenever you see these absolute values in a limit, usually you're gonna deal with one-sided limits. We went over that in the lecture videos and I'd highly recommend you watch those before watching this one as I go into a lot of detail about how to solve these one-sided limits. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna deal with this absolute value function. So let's rewrite it on the side here. So let's just write the absolute value of two X minus seven. And what does the absolute value do? It changes everything to a positive. So if two X minus seven is already positive, then we just leave it like it is. And if it's negative, then we change it to a positive. So we can actually rewrite this function as a piecewise function. So two X minus seven is just gonna be two X minus seven as it is when two X minus seven is greater than zero. Let's actually put greater than or equal to zero. And then um, if two X minus seven is negative, then we have to multiply it by negative one in order to change it to a positive. And that's gonna happen when two X minus seven is less than zero or when it's negative. And we can take these here and we can change them to look a little nicer. So two X minus seven greater than or equal to zero. Let's isolate for this X. So bring the negative seven over, divide both sides by two. So this is the same as when X is greater than or equal to seven over two. And then this two X minus seven less than zero Again, isolate for the x, you would get x being less than seven over two. So instead of writing these expressions, let's write these where the x is isolated. It just looks nicer. So this here is gonna happen when x is greater than or equal to seven over two. And then this here is gonna happen when x is less than seven over two. So when x is less than seven over two, this whole expression is gonna be negative so then we gotta multiply it by negative one in order to change it to a positive. And when x is greater than or equal to seven over two, this is gonna be zero or positive, so we can just leave it like it is. So we can now take this and then apply it to this big function that we have. So we can take this, uh, let's actually rewrite it. So we got f of x equals, 2x minus 7x plus 3 all over 2x minus 7. And we can rewrite it as a piecewise function as well using that. So this absolute value would change to just 2x minus 7 um, when x is greater than or equal to 7 over 2. And it would change to negative 2x minus 7. Everything else stays as it is when x is less than 7 over 2. And now notice that uh, these expressions in the numerator and the denominator are equal. So these can cancel out, and then these can cancel out as well. So we can rewrite a simplified piecewise function. So we'll have f of x is x plus 3 when x is greater than or equal to 7 over 2 and it's equal to negative x plus 3 when x is uh, less than or equal to or uh, just less than 7 over 2. So now we have a piecewise function and its meeting point is this x value of seven over two. So we just uh, took out that two x minus seven expression in both the numerator and the denominator, and we have this simplified piecewise function. So this function is equal to this piecewise function here. And since this piecewise function has a meeting point where we are solving the limit at, what we have to do is we have to take the limit from each side. We have to solve each one-sided limit and see what it's going to approach, what y value it's going to approach from both sides. So we first have to find out, let's draw a little line here. So 
So we have to find out the limit as x approaches 7 over 2 from the negative side. And then let's uh, label this as f of x instead of just rewriting it. So as we approach 7 over 2 from the negative side, what's this function going to equal? Well, we can go to our simplified piecewise function and notice that when x is less than 7 over 2, so for the left side of it, it's defined by this function here. So we can plug in 7 over 2 for this function to solve this one-sided limit. So 7 over 2, which is like 3.5, plus 3 gives us 6.5, and then this negative in front makes it a negative. So the answer to this limit, as x approaches 7 over 2 from the left side, from the negative side, plugging in 7 over 2, we get negative 6.5. Well, let's keep it uh, in fractions, negative 13 over 2. And then the limit as x approaches 7 over 2 from the positive side, well, we would look at this part right here. So all the x values that are greater than 7 over 2 that are to the right of it are going to be defined, the function is going to be defined by this here, x plus 3. And plugging in 7 over 2 into this here, we get 3.5 plus 3, which gives us positive 6.5 or positive 13 over 2. So notice how the limit as x approaches 7 over 2 from the negative side of the function does not equal the limit as x approaches 7 over 2 from the positive side of the function, which means that the limit as x approaches 7 over 2 of the function does not exist. Right? If the limit is approaching different values from both sides, limit does not exist. Now you can also show this on a graph before doing all of this so you could see it visually. That's actually maybe what I'd recommend doing first instead of trying to just do it algebraically. So we can graph this piecewise function. So let's start off with the negative side. This uh, negative bracket x plus 3, that's the same as negative x minus 3. Right, if we distribute the negative inside. So we know this is a line. It's going to have a y-intercept of negative 3. And it's going to have a negative slope of negative 1. So we know that this line here is going to go downwards all the way to this x value of 7 over 2. And then at 7 over 2, there's going to be like this hole here. And then for x values that are greater than or equal to 7 over 2, it's defined by this line, x plus 3. And this line has a positive y-intercept of 3, and it has a positive slope of 1. So we know this line is going to look something like this. However, notice that it's not defined for x values less than 7 over 2, because x values less than 7 over 2, it's defined by that line here. So we got to erase everything all the way to 7 over 2. So all of this here. So like that. So this is how this function looks like, or this function, if we graph it. And it has that meeting point at 7 over 2. And notice that there's a discontinuity there. Because the limit as we approach 7 over 2 from the negative side, well, that's going to approach a y value we said of negative 13 over 2. So this y value here of this hole is negative 13 over 2. And then as we approach that x value 7 over 2 from the positive side, it's going to approach a y value of 13 over 2, positive. So because it's approaching two different y values from each side, the limit does not exist.